a little bit more on those stories much later. But first, immigration ha has been a sensitive issue worldwide and more so here in South Africa where sensitivities towards immigrants has seen xenophobic attacks by locals. Afrobarometer has done some research on the immigration issue and what people think about uh, government's handling of immigration. To tell us uh, more, we're now joined uh, from uh, Cape Town by Gugu Nonjinga, who's a project leader from the Institute of Justice Reconciliation. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, uh, Gugu. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Peter. All right, so Gugu, uh, before we get into the findings itself, tell us a little bit about uh, how the research is done and uh, how you end up getting to these findings. So Afrobarometer works in 37 African countries and in the region South Africa happens to be one of those countries. Uh, we're a non-partisan research network. Uh, we conduct um, surveys on areas of governance, economy, the elections and politics. So some of the questions that we actually ask here in South Africa are questions on tolerance and on immigration um, and migration in the country. We interviewed about 1,800 um, adult citizens. We made sure that our sample is nationally representative and our respondents are asked um, the questionnaire in a, in a language that is actually comfortable um, for them. All right, let's take a look at some of the things that you found out. And the first question, uh, how government is performing in terms of uh, managing immigration. What did you find? Um, significant majorities of South Africans or of respondents to the survey um, actually rate the government negatively on issues of migration and government handling um, issues of migration and migra immigration in the country. What, what are they concerned about, do you know? Um, majority of them actually are, are split in some in some po in some policies that have been um, put forward in the 2017 um, white paper on international immigration in the country, and this includes access to economic opportunities, um, those who seek political protection in the country. So, in as much as South Africans are actually rating the government negatively, the data also show that they're quite tolerant of, of foreigners in the country. You mentioned tolerance. Let's uh, take a look at because uh, that was one of the things that you. Uh, was measured in the Afrobarometer, tolerance towards the immigrants and uh, people from other ethnic groups. We're putting up the graphic now. Tell us what it tells us. So the, the chart um, in front of you right now shows that significant proportions of those who responded to the survey are actually tolerant um, towards having foreigners as neighbors and also those of different ethnic groups. Um, we didn't disaggregate, again, this data in terms of which foreigners are South Africans speaking of, but also we take it as an account of the people that are not from the country or are citizens of the country. Um, but it does show that they actually are much more welcoming in having um, these different um, groups um, as neighbors in their communities. All right, so can we say then, by and large, the majority of South Africans are not xenophobic? There's a, the, the, the definition yeah. of xenophobia in itself is very broad, so much that we can't focus only on tolerance. There yeah. are other things that we need to look into, such as the advancing of policies in the country and also the practices on those policies in the country as well. All right, so let's go to the next chart, attitudes regarding immigration. And there's quite a lot on this one. Walk us through that. So the chart on attitudes towards immigration in the country, you see that respondents were asked in terms of do they, should they agree or do they not agree in terms of um, foreigners should be, should be barred from, from accessing employment in the country. And you can see that a majority of them actually say that no foreigner should not be given work in the country. Um, and then again, the last, the last chart, as you can see in the, in, in, the, in the graphic in front of you, it asks if those who are persecuted in their country should be offered with some protection in our country. And again, you can see a bit of mix of, of, of feelings, but also majorities are still saying that South Africa should not offer um, this political protection to those who actually seek it and those who are actually see, um, fleeing um, political persecutions from their countries. All right, so this uh, politically persecuted foreigners deserve protection in South Africa. That's quite close. 48% say no and they strongly disagree. So there is a bit of sensitivity in, in allowing people to come if they are 
if they feel uh, persecuted in their own countries. Definitely there is a bit of, the, as I'm saying, the data yeah. shows that South Africans are actually divided in these policies. And maybe this is something that we need to engage in. When we're looking at the data on those who are actually seeking employment and barring foreigners from entering the country to seek um, economic opportunities, when we disaggregate the data, you can see that majorities of these people are young people and majorities of them are unemployed. And it is no surprise because then again, unemployment is one of the most um, important problems um, rated by Afrobarometer based from the South African data as well. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, employment and legislation that manages whether immigrants are allowed to work or not. And this is an area that you've been looking at. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, some of the things that you've observed. So as I mentioned, the latest data shows has ranked a number of um, problems in South Africa that South Africans actually think that the government must look into. Um, the issues of unemployment in the country ranks uh, the first, followed by housing and security. Inasmuch as we're going to the elections and we know most political parties are looking on issues such as land, I think it is high time that the leadership actually takes into account some of these, um, some of these problems that the, the citizens are putting forward. So the issue of employment and accessing economic opportunities and barring foreigners stems from a very important problem within South Africa, which is the issue of unemployment um, in the country. All right. It's not explicit in this report, but I just wonder, are people making a connection, rightly or wrongly, to immigrants and employment opportunities inside the country? So that if I'm a blue-collar worker and I'm looking for a job, Am I less likely to get a job because an immigrant is in the country? No, definitely. I think also that is a, a homework that our mm -hmm. our leadership or the, those in government need to actually take into into consideration in terms of unpacking to the citizens that, in as much as South Africa benefits from foreign from the foreign aid policy and also from international relations, people who come to the country actually um, advance the country more than anything than taking other people's jobs. And that's the I think for me is the groundwork that needs to be done um, in order to uh, to unpack those in rural South Africa, those in urban South Africa to actually understand it. And I think that's where the issue of xenophobia stems from, is the lack of understanding of these terms and how it implicates on our daily lives. All right, so when I look to other countries in the world, I look to uh, England, I look to America, which is made of immigrants pretty much, is there, uh, I don't know, uh, an understanding that sometimes a country can move forward if they have immigrants much quicker than countries that don't? Um, uh, the latest um, Afrobarometer Pan-African profile was looking at migration and youth. And we can see that majorities of those who actually leave um, Africa are young people. However, they leave again seeking employment opportunities and other economic opportunities. And in as much as you can ex you would expect that most of these young people are going to Europe and so forth, they're actually moving within around the countries, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the continent, and not necessarily in their regions, but also from different parts of the continent as well. So I think for me, that's something that um, the continent at large needs to look into in terms of the young people are leaving their countries to seek op opportunities in different other regions. And that's something maybe that we need to address. All right. So what recommendations would this report really give to the president, Minister of Home Affairs, perhaps, in terms of looking at policy uh, around immigration? I think for me it would have been that the policies that are being implemented or the policies that are put forward in as much as the white paper has about eight areas that it focuses on pertaining immigration in the country they need to bottle it down so much that the ordinary person or the ordinary South, South Africans is reflected and views of the ordinary South, South African are addressed um, by these policies and that they are not as high level as they are currently they need to be broken down and understood by the ordinary citizen. All right, so Gugu, we're going to have to leave there. Thank you so much indeed uh, for uh, giving us uh, some insights into this uh, interesting research okay. done by Afrobarometer. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. All right, okay. So